Welcome to r slash Tales from Tech Support, where we get to have a little chuckle at the technologically disadvantaged, like me. I'm Uncle Reddit, and have I got a story for you. Well, Happy New Year, almost. We don't usually do much anymore around here. We just kind of chill out around the house, play some games with the kids, stay up till midnight and watch the ball drop on TV in New York City, and then, uh, yup, then I finish celebrating by staring at the back of my eyelids. What do you guys do for New Year's? Let me know down below. Until we hit midnight, though, let's enjoy some stories. How I Didn't Catch a Thief English is not my first language, so feel free to ignore any errors. Also, this story is about 25 years old, so I enhance the forgotten details accordingly. Context So I was in IT support for a government-related organization, and they were about to upgrade all desktop computers to Windows NT 4.0 workstations, which was recently released or about to be released. I was sent into the building with a box full of memory strips and instructed to make sure all desktop computers were equipped with a certain amount of RAM. My memory says 64 megabytes. As luck would have it, they were highly standardized so all computers were of the same series and they had plenty of memory slots. I did ask whether I would need to make an inventory of what went where, but I was assured that their asset management system would keep track of everything. Oh boy, it did keep track of everything. It was way advanced for the 90s. At the end of the day, my manager showed me their logs and it showed exactly which serial number memory strip ended up in which slot on which desktop PC. They were quite happy that I had thought of reusing as much as I could as the memory was really expensive back then. It took me a few days and all users were happy to get some extra coffee break while I upgraded their computer. On to the story itself, which happened a few days after the upgrades. HDM is yours truly. FDM, friendly department manager. CMU, clueless malicious user. FDM. Happy Dutchman, can you please go over to CMU and check their workstation as our system shows that half of their memory is missing as of yesterday lunchtime. I go over to see CMU and the conversation goes about as follows. HDM. Hi CMU, remember me from a few days ago when I upgraded your memory? They immediately turn red and can only stutter now. Never seen this person stutter before. CMU. Uh, uh yes? HDM. Well, there seems to be an issue with your memory. Our system reports that half of it's missing. This could, of course, be an error on our end, so I'm checking with you if you've noticed anything strange, such as slow performance. CMU, gasping for air and staring wide-eyed. No, 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 don't know, no, no, didn't notice anything strange, no, 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 why'd you ask? HDM, trying not to laugh. Well, okay, no worries. It probably is something on our end, then. If you do notice any problems, just let us know, all right? CMU, calming down a wee bit, but still super alert and breathing heavily. Uh, yes, yes, sure, I will do. I go back to our control room and explain what happened to FDM. We have a good laugh. We don't have any cameras or anything, so proving that CMU's stolen the memory would need police investigation at their place and so on. The next morning, we check the asset management system, and to our joy, the memory of this user is all back in place. They did change the order of the memory strips, but this didn't matter. End of the story is that CMU probably messed their pants and had a rough night as they were one of the first people in the office the second day. Well, look who's back. It's Nickel. Now you get to watch him take a bath. And for that one viewer, the cat cam gets to cover up those wooden pegs that are missing out of my uh, clothes rack back here. Bonus. I didn't read past the first sentence of your reply, so maybe you didn't understand and I should ask again. I got an email from one of our regional technicians. He wanted to know how many pins a particular sensor was supposed to have. It's an understandable question since it looks like one of the pins is missing. I replied that the sensor only used three wires and only needed three pins. The fourth pin on the sensor is cut off at the factory because it doesn't do anything. I then get a reply five minutes later with a photo of the sensor asking me if the fourth pin was supposed to have been cut off. I did a copy and paste of the relevant sentence I just sent and was rewarded with a cheerful reply thanking me. That'll teach me to answer questions while on vacation. I only answered because I had nothing better to do while I waited for dinner to finish cooking. And this one looked like a fish in a barrel. Yeah. I get that in emails. I get it in person. All the time. Ask me a question. I give a reply. A very thoughtful reply most of the time. And people don't listen. They don't pay attention. They don't read. They ask me the same question again or just maybe rearrange the way they asked. You know, rearrange the order of certain words. And it's like... I just answered that for you. Why are you asking me again? Is it that you don't believe me? And you think asking over and over? It's like it's like little kids, you know. Keep asking until you get the answer you want, I guess. Saved a perfectly good printer from ID10T Recycling. 
Background. I work for an MSP and was on site doing cleanup work after a switch replacement over the weekend. I was just about to leave when one of my coworkers asked me to look at a printer issue they had been troubleshooting for the past few days. They need a verification that the printer was completely dead so they could order a new one. They had spent at least four collective hours troubleshooting the printer remotely. So I mosey on over to the printer and ask the users to show me what's happening. They send the print job. Nothing prints out. I look at the printer after the test print is sent and it's waiting for a paper tray verification. I hit OK to specify the paper size, then at least 50 documents start printing out. The users are ecstatic, singing my praises as the savior of printers. Notified my colleagues and they all had a good laugh, and they canceled the quote for the new printer they were about to order. <laughs> see that's that not reading thing again. Did anybody go look at the printer to see if it was like giving you a message like, you know, error, help, need paper, is this the right tray? Whatever. Usually the printer will tell you, or at least give you a clue as to why it's not working right. Right, Nickel? Okay. Good talk. I'm allergic to chemicals. You're going to buy me a new computer. This memory popped on my timeline this morning. I used to run a computer repair shop. One of the standard operating procedures was, of course, to dust out the fans with compressed air. We also ran down the entire repair manifest with the customer at pickup time. This eliminated the, well, you never told me you, or why is it $85 when all you had to do was? So we tell her we tested all the output voltages, dusted the system fans, at which point she exploded. You did what? You used chemicals on my computer? No ma'am, we dusted out your computer. With chemicals? No ma'am, we have an air compressor in the back. It has a moisture dryer on it and it's piped to all the workbenches. It's just compressed air. But it's a machine, so it puts chemicals into the air, and I'm allergic to chemicals. Ugh. Ma'am, no. I assure you, any traces of chemicals would have long dissipated if that were even possible. You're going to buy me a new computer. This is outrageous. No one told you to spray chemicals on my computer. Ma'am, let me get this straight. You want us to buy you a new computer, of which the parts are made in China, with all sorts of chemicals used in the manufacturing process to give to you? Well, she huffed and puffed and stormed out. And this is how after 22 years of retail service, I just can't deal with customer service anymore. We manufacture soap. It's a chemical. Water's a chemical. Air's a chemical. But people come in and tell me about all their allergies and ailments and that they're allergic to this, that, or the other thing. The number of people that tell me they're allergic to lie. No, I doubt it very much. It's pretty rare to be allergic to lie. Now, if I don't make the recipe properly, and it's lye heavy, like too much lye in a batch, you won't get an allergic reaction, you'll just get a burn, a chemical burn, and it'll be mild because, unless I'm really stupid and pour pounds and pounds of it in, eh, it's not gonna happen. But people like to argue and they think they know better, no matter what. Check the paper in the tray. I had a ticket opened up that all the paper is coming out of tray two and bypassing tray one. Now this is a problem because tray two is perforated paper meant for printing coupons and tray one is plain paper for printing everything else. And all the programs that print to the printer are set up so that if you print the thing that requires the perforated paper, it automatically picks the right tray and vice versa. From the title, you can probably guess the problem. I check all the settings and nothing's changed. So I open tray one and look in it. Someone's put perforated paper in tray one. So it wasn't bypassing the tray. It was printing from the tray. Someone just put the wrong paper in it. Sometimes you need big, obvious signs for people. I mean, it was probably just an honest mistake, but you'd think somebody would go back and check. Hey, did I load that right? Or maybe somebody else would check behind them. Nope, not my job. All my changes are gone. I'm going to cry. I work for a small organization at the help desk. I just received a call. I kid you not, just a few minutes ago about the changes made to a file not being saved. I asked the user if they actually use the Control plus S key command or click the floppy disk icon in Excel. They said they don't remember because the file always auto saves. Oh boy. This got me thinking that they may be using OneDrive to save the file, and I know the O365 apps can auto save to a designated location on OneDrive in real time. That wasn't the case at all, and the user was saving to a network folder, which shows it had not been modified since yesterday. I tried to put it gently, but realistically, that the file was not saved and that it was not possible to recover said changes. The user sounded sad and upset because they were sure that all the files that were worked on got saved automatically because the new changes are there after reopening the file. 
I was kind of upset that the user didn't take accountability and tried to shift the blame to IT by saying that the files were not auto-saving after another member of our team helped with an unrelated issue. The user then proceeded to let out a heavy sigh and I apologized. Well, next time use the save option. Most of the time when I open up a Word doc, Excel, PowerPoint, this video, anything, I will automatically save as, like save a project, save a document, whatever, name it, save it, then start working on it because, because I know that something bad is going to happen if I don't. This thing will shut off, we'll have a power outage, something, I don't know, whatever. Whatever it is, it's going to happen. And it's going to happen to me. I forget sometimes, but it's pretty rare. You would think it would not be that hard to explain. I work for a medical provider doing basic data entry, but got the lovely treat of sitting next to the IT call center. Most days the calls seemed to be quick fixes, but there were some gems that blew my mind. I listened to one guy on a call for almost an hour explain to a doctor the function of the shift and caps lock buttons. This dude had the patience of a saint because he kept calmly repeating the same thing over and over. Eventually the call ended and I had to ask who he was speaking to as a doctor and what area he worked in. He said yes and asked why. There was no way I was risking my health with someone who can't figure out a caps lock key. <laughs> you know, I understand a doctor's main job is not computers, but you know, being around them so much and having to use them in their daily practice. I mean, even the most old timey doctors that I know of these days in little small rural communities are using computers, tablets, laptops. They're using tech because it makes your life easier. And if you deal with insurance companies, you kind of have to use tech. Yes, you have an office manager who can deal with a lot of that stuff for you, but there are things that you have to do. You know, so many images and x-rays are sent via tech. And, I mean, you know, you never typed a paper in college? I mean, I guess if you're 80-something and you're a doctor, and maybe not, but I don't know. Just odd. Spoiler alert. Computers require electricity to function. This is the first time I've ever written up something like this on Reddit, so apologies if it's a little rough around the edges. I work in IT at a school district, in a team that consists of just two people, including me. As you can imagine, having such a small team covering multiple campuses can make things pretty hectic. Add some rather unpleasant people to the mix and things can get pretty stressful for us. One particular week I was given the task of going to every classroom in the district, labs included, and setting up the PCs that had been pulled out due to the floors being cleaned. Unfortunately, we were not the ones who pulled out the desks and PCs, so a lot of the setup and cable managed desktops turned into jumbled messes thrown back onto their desks. From people having their desks put into awful locations multiple feet away from network jacks and power and tangled cables that will forever haunt my nightmares, I definitely had my work cut out for me. But I managed to get the job done. Cables may not have been expertly managed with cable ties and whatnot, but all the PCs I set back up were double checked by myself to ensure they turned on and operated properly. Most people were perfectly fine with how I set their PCs back up. Of course, though, there is always that one person that you can't please. That one person who hates the IT department with a passion. That particular individual was far from happy with their new setup. They decided to issue a complaint in which they claimed their cables were all over the place. Their speakers were no longer functioning, and now their PC no longer powers on. I knew there was no way any of this was possible from my end, as I thoroughly checked each PC I worked on but I decided to be the nice IT guy and check it out. Luckily, they were not in their classroom, so I was able to investigate with no interruptions. The first thing I noticed was they had completely moved both the computer and the desk to the other side of the room. That checks off the first complaint, as the cable disaster was caused by her moving the PC herself instead of calling us. Next, I moved on to seeing if the PC powered on, which it did not. Intrigued, I checked the power cable, which was not even plugged into the power strip. I wish I was making this up. Either that was done on purpose or they don't realize computers need electricity to function. After being plugged into power, the PC booted up with everything working, including the speakers. I reported my findings and left the building. Since then, we luckily have not been bothered by this individual. I'll never understand why people act like this, but hey, it keeps us employed. Yep, never understand that. People will do all kinds of things to themselves, for themselves, and blame you for their own ineptness and, uh unwillingness to call for help or follow directions or whatever. Hey, if you guys enjoyed this video, do me a favor. Click this one right here. I think you're going to enjoy this one too. Say bye, Nickel. Say bye, Nickel. Eh, see ya.